I swear to you, I don't know him. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal one, holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal. Hello friend, I'm Randall Terry, the founder of Operation Rescue. If you're not familiar with me, I encourage you to look online and look at my credentials and determine whether or not I even have the right to say the things that I am about to say. Now in this presentation, you're going to hear from some legendary pro-lifers like Joan Andrews Bell, Joe Scheider. You'll be hearing from Father Stephen Umberato, Missy Smith, other great pro-lifers. And we're gonna play some clips for you from Father James Altman, which I know you are going to appreciate. Bishops and priests, I have three questions for you. Number one, is abortion murder? Number two, how should we vote to stop that murder? And number three, which party and which candidates promote the murder of children? And which party and candidates have said, no, we want to stop the murder of children? Archbishop Gregory, you are responsible for this. Which one of these could you have saved through speaking up, being the shepherd that you're supposed to be? Your silence might enable Biden to be elected. How many babies will die because of your silence? Wilton Gregory, you're a, a traitor to your own black race you're a traitor to the human race, and you're a traitor to, the, to Catholicism. What is your problem? Figure it out. Are you just without a heart? You don't love Christ? You're a wolf. What about this is so hard to understand? If you're supporting Biden, you're supporting murder. I think that a person in good conscience could vote for Mr. Biden, I frankly, in, in, my, in my own way of thinking, have a more difficult time with, with the other option. Cardinal Tobin, we Catholics who love the church, who are faithful, who try to the best of our ability to be faithful to the teachings of Jesus Christ and his holy church. We love you, but we are so upset and so scandalized by your support of child killing. The Democratic Party is a party of murder. It's evil. And it breaks our heart because we love you to see you supporting evil. To say you're pro-life and you vote, you'll vote for someone who is a murderer and anyone who votes for murder participates in murder and is thus a murderer. And we pray for you, we love you, but we want you to repent and become pro-life, become, become truly moral and stand by the teaching of, of Holy Mother Church and our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Most American bishops right now refuse to say the truth. Who are you? Why are you here? They're not my brothers and sisters. You need to go. The Democrat Party, in its platform, promotes the killing of children and has committed to keeping it going and committed for our tax money to be used to pay for it. Yeah, it was awkward, but it's, it's just not my deal. Look, it, I'm not a politician. It's not my job to tell people how to vote, okay? If they want to vote for Hitler, if they want to vote for a slaveholder, or baby killers, it's just not my job. Bishops, we're waiting. Our tax exemption matters more than those babies. They won't name the names of people, starting with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris on down who are committed to killing children. We need our priests and we need our bishops and deacons and archbishops and cardinals, etc., to be clear. Now we hear this excuse. Well, it's IRS regulations. I have to do what the IRS has said. It's not true. First of all, you don't give up your rights as an American citizen because you're a cleric. Look at St. Paul. He was a Roman citizen, and he used his Roman citizenship to protect himself, to protect his rights, and to have a platform to speak the truth. 
the truth to kings and to governors. You're a U.S. citizen. You have the right to speak about politics, about parties, about candidates without fear. And President Trump signed an executive order specifically dealing with so-called IRS tax exempt issues. What about this is so hard to understand? As this film is being made, I'm up here, Joe Scheidler from Chicago, and I'm at the Democratic National Convention. And one thing we're trying to get over to the bishops right now, be against abortion, talk about abortion, and tell anybody who votes for an abortionist, and that's the Democratic Party, is in a state of mortal sin. It's just that simple. If you support the killing of innocent, unborn children, you support murder. And you cannot support murder and be in the state of grace. I hope this message goes far and wide and some of these bishops have the courage and strength and integrity to say you cannot vote for anyone supporting the murder of an unborn child. Think of St. John the Baptist. He went to where Herod was and he said, Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife while your brother yet lives. He was right in Herod's face, he said Herod's name, and he spelled out the exact sin. Can you imagine St. John the Baptist saying, there's someone somewhere doing something wrong? It's absurd. It's absolutely morally, spiritually incumbent on every bishop to point out that there cannot be a vote for anyone, let alone Joe Biden, who supports the killing of innocent human life. And the bishops have to find their voice and guide the flock. Dear family, now is not the time to beat around the bush. Now is the time to speak as clearly as possible. It is just too bad that we're not hearing that voice of the shepherds in the hierarchy. I wish the bishops would have the courage and, and lead us. Yeah, 50 years from now, I fear that we will look back and say, why were Catholics so silent? And why didn't the bishops lead us? Bishops, please, we need you to speak out and tell the truth. I implore you bishops, all of you, speak up. Don't be cowards. Don't Go in your rectory, lock the door, and climb under your bed. It's time for you to speak up. Jesus spoke up. He carried that cross all the way to the end. And what he went through for the truth, we need you to speak up for the truth now. Speak up for the truth. Not after the election in November. Now. Wake up, bishops. You are the leaders of the church. Speak up. Don't worry about losing the money. You're losing your souls. You're losing the church. Take a look around. Wake up. Speak up. Lead your congregation. You cannot vote for a Democrat party, period. They support abortion. Now the full nine months. That's fully viable babies. Are you kidding me? So, so what, you want to vote for them because you may get money for immigration, you may get money for this. Is it worth it? What is more valuable, that money or the child? The child is. The child is. If your life was about to be snuffed out, wouldn't you want the bishop screaming his lungs out for you? Think of the saints who have gone before us. Saint Justin Martyr, who rebuked Roman emperors. We have Saint Stanislaus, who confronted the wicked king of Poland and was martyred for it. We have St. Thomas Becket, who confronted the wicked king, Henry II, and was martyred for it in Canterbury Cathedral. In English history, before the Reformation, we have Catholic bishops who were involved in basically holding King John hostage and forcing him to sign the Magna Carta. That is your heritage. Those are your examples. They confronted evil, they confronted evildoers by name. Now, to be fair, there are some bishops who have come out and with a two or a three or a four page letter have explained that child killing is the preeminent issue 
And some have even gone so far as to say all the other issues combined don't add up to the killing of children. But almost all of them are quick to say, I won't tell you how to vote. You have to form your own conscience. You have to do what you think is right. And these letters oftentimes are so long and so convoluted and they lack such clarity that somebody could read it and come away scratching their head. Come away saying, well, I guess the bishop told me I can do whatever I want to do. We need our priests and we need our bishops and deacons and archbishops and cardinals, etc., to be clear. If you vote for Joe Biden, you're voting for somebody who has committed to kill babies and committed to use your money to pay for it. How hard can this be? If you want to be heard, go where you're going to be heard. Hold a press conference. Next, stop saying the line, we can't talk about partisan politics. Listen, the catechism says you can't be a communist. It says it. There's a communist party. That's partisan politics. The Democrat platform is an offense against God concerning innocent blood and the sacrament of marriage and human sexuality. Why would you not say that the Democrat platform is an offense against the Almighty? Hello again, Bishop. Hi. Would you be willing to make any short statement on camera that says that we have to put babies first in our vote? I'm, I'm not prepared for it, and I, I, I'm not good at that sort of thing unless I have some time to prepare. Uh, it's literally it's, one line, anything that just speaks to the Catholic theology that the shedding of innocent blood is the worst crime. At, at this point, I'm not, I'm not prepared and I'm not willing. No, I don't know him. Don't know her either. Go! I don't know you. I don't know him. What the hell is wrong with you? I told you, I don't know him. Your Excellency, I'm traveling all over the country with a band of pro-lifers mm -hmm. asking the bishop, which would include you, mm -hmm. to publicly state that it is a sin to vote for a pro-choice candidate. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in that car and someone comes and knocks on the window and says, hey, take me to get groceries for my kids and medicine for my neighbor, and I'm also going to rob the bank and shoot the teller, mm -hmm. if I take them, mm -hmm. I'm an accessory to the crime if they commit it. Mm -hmm. So even though I agree with him on the food, even though I agree with him on the medicine, if I stood before a judge or stood before God, because I helped them get to the place where they could commit a murder, mm -hmm. I have participated in that sin. Mm -hmm. So. As a prince in Christ Church, you have the authority and I believe the duty to publicly say you cannot vote in good conscience for someone who promotes the killing of babies, even if you agree with him on every other issue. Mm -hmm. So if I was a slave trader and you agreed with me on every other issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Will you do it? I'll consider it. All right. Please. I'm not going to give you a, an answer I, I, now. It, Please do it. All right. Please. Thank you, Randy. It's very possible that you, the Catholic lay people, in your diocese, have the ability and maybe, just maybe, the power. What am I talking about? I'm talking about face-to-face -face confrontation. I'm calling upon Catholic pro-lifers and all pro-lifers across this country to hold your clergy accountable, and especially those who have shepherds who have vacated their duty and have scandalized the innocent to hold them accountable. And if you have a bishop who does not say of voting for Biden or any pro-abortion candidate is a sin, then that bishop is sinning by his silence. And God will hold him accountable, but God has given us the duty to hold our bishops accountable. You must tell the faithful that it is a sin to vote for Joe Biden. Preach the truth that no Catholic can in good conscience vote for Joe Biden. He supports the murder of unborn babies. It is your duty. Preach the truth. We beg you, please. Please, please, if your bishop is silent, please confront him. It's the most loving thing you could do for him. 
the bishops who are silent are indeed guilty of scandal. Pastors who lack foresight hesitate to say openly what is right because they fear losing the favor of men. As the voice of truth tells us, such leaders are not zealous pastors who protect their flocks. Rather, they're like mercenaries who flee by taking refuge in silence when the wolf appears. The Lord reproaches them through the prophets. They are like dumb dogs that cannot bark. When a pastor is afraid to assert what is right, has he not turned his back and fled by remaining silent? And you guys know that I've been telling you is get in front of the bishop's residence, not their offices, not the chanceries, in front of their residence, 24-hour vigils, right? It, it, two things, all right? It tells them, we know where you live and we're praying for you, right? But in that message, right, you bring the media, list of grievances, where's the McCarrick report, get out into the streets, get on the sidewalk, whether it be in front of the bishop's house like Randall did yesterday, uh, or in front of uh, somebody's church. I never thought that, I always said that I, I'd never protest in front of a Catholic church, but I said, you know what, I'm not protesting, in front. I am, that's the location, I'm standing up for my faith. I'm standing up for my faith, your faith, because I love my faith. We're in Wilmington, Delaware, in front of the rectory, the parsonage, the home of Bishop Maluli, who is Joe Biden's bishop. After years and years of public scandal, public scandal, not one time has Bishop Maluli said anything about Biden receiving communion, about Biden promoting the murder of babies, about Biden saying that he wants taxpayer money to pay for the murder of babies. Not one public word from Bishop Maluli. They're killing babies. I know. And you haven't, you haven't rebuked Biden publicly. You haven't held him accountable at any level. Well, he publicly, public scandal requires a public rebuke. You could probably have him defeated if you would just say it's a sin to vote for someone who is promoting baby killing and wants us to pay for it with our tax money. Archbishop Perez, we are tired of waiting for clarity from you. We are your sheep. Please speak out in truth and clarity. You must say that it is wrong for a Catholic to vote for Joe Biden. We must not support abortion in any way, any day of the week. But your Catholics are confused, and we know it, because we've been speaking to them. Archbishop, you must speak to them, because you have the authority of your position. The election is almost upon us. There are two more things that you can do. One, take a video of yourself, 15, 20, 30 seconds long. Use your phone. Put it on your Facebook, make a YouTube, put it on the church's Facebook page. Bishops, it is absolutely clear where the Catholic Church stands in regards to the issue of abortion. And yet you have failed to denounce Joe Biden, who has pledged that if he wins, he will repeal the Hyde Amendment, which would make every American directly and actively involved in the killing of unborn human beings. I cannot think of a worse way to waste the authority that Jesus confirmed upon you. Archbishop Blaise Supich from Chicago. My name is Mary Salazar, and I am a young woman, a Roman Catholic young woman in the US. And I am urging you to please come out and condemn Joe Biden. Say it is a mortal sin to vote for him because he is aiming to kill all of our children through abortion up to nine months and past. Hi, my name is Joel Rocha. I'm a Roman Catholic, and I'm here to speak out against old Joe Biden to tell the bishops and the archbishops of this nation to speak out against the horrible things that Joe Biden has done, particularly his position on abortion, his radical extremist position. He doesn't only want abortions, but he wants us to be paying for these abortions. This is outrageous, this is disgusting, and this needs to stop. Where are your voices? As leaders of the Catholic Church, we demand you speak up. There are a lot of things about Trump that I don't like, but newsflash, he doesn't support murder. And the other thing that you can do, I know this is gonna sound hard for some of you, but you can do it. 
get two or three or 10 or 12 of your friends and go in front of the cathedral and make a video there and call the press. Call the assignment desk, get your TV station, send them a little email, 100 words, telling them what you're gonna do, why you're gonna do it, when you're gonna be there, and you'll probably get some press coverage. Because the bishops might ignore emails, but they won't ignore the front page of your newspaper or your evening news. And since many of them just aren't gonna do the job, you can do the job through the secular media. My name is Michael McMonagle, president of the Pro-Life Coalition of Pennsylvania, lifelong Philadelphia resident. Uh, we're here to urge the Archbishop and other local church leaders to be not afraid. Be not afraid to speak the truth. Your silence is enabling their public policy actions to kill children in the womb. Please end your silence. Act like it was you that was in danger of death and you needed people to lift up their voices in every way that they possibly could. If Biden wins this election, the impact on our country will be unthinkable. And a huge part of the blame and the guilt for a Biden victory can be laid right at the feet of the bishops because of their treachery and their silence. It is the silence that is deadly. It is the silence that is killing babies. We are here to testify against you. Bishops, tell the truth. It's time for you to repent. I'm an atheist and I'm out here telling people it's a sin to vote for pro-choice candidates. Get it together. You betray the unborn babies. You protect the wolves. Bishops, tell the truth. Why, don't, why won't you speak out about Biden's horrific support of Planned Parenthood? What in the world are you afraid of? Why won't you say it? Bishops, do your job. Is there too much money involved? Bishops, tell the truth. You think you can pull this over everybody's eyes? Bishops, tell the truth. You think we don't see what you're doing? I am an atheist and I have put my reputation on the line to save babies. When will you? For the love of God, for the love of unborn babies. What are you waiting for? God has given you a lot of power and you are purposely failing to use it for the most defenseless, the unborn babies. Bishops, what are you afraid of? Be Catholic, go to confession, or just resign. Silence is complicity. As a, I put it in the bulletin before, as the great Archbishop Charles Chaput put it, for Pope Benedict, lay people and priests don't need to publicly renounce their Catholic faith to be apostates. They simply need to be silent when their baptism demands that they speak out to be cowards when Jesus asks them to have courage. Your family, silence in the face of evil is complicity.